Hey everybody, I'm John and Clark Cards. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, it is Saturday, July 20th. Uh, here when I'm recording this in the early evening, probably posting this either late Saturday night or early Sunday morning. But um, we are just days away, 96 hours or less from the start of um, uh, the National uh, Sports Collectors Convention 2024 in Cleveland. Um, I'll be there for two days, Thursday and Friday this week. Um, so I guess it's less than 96 hours for some of you out there, maybe many. Uh, for me, it's about four days away, uh, but I cannot wait for it. And um, yeah, I, in this video, I'm going to kind of run down my um, plan, if you will, for uh, for the show. Um, it's not a big one. Um, the budget's not big either. It's not teeny tiny, um, which is uh, which is great. Um, so we'll see what I can do. Um, but uh, so the fact that it's in Cleveland, that's uh, that's pretty interesting in its own right um uh, look you know look forward to uh the ix center and comparing that to uh, uh the one in chicago the convention center there where hopefully the uh the heat won't be as much of an issue uh, in the afternoons or a lack of air conditioning thereof um we'll see but um so when you know when i you know knowing it's in cleveland it gets me thinking about a couple of things. Um, so I haven't been to Cleveland that often, but I've driven through downtown a number of times. Um, so I live in Michigan, and whenever we go to visit um, uh, my family in New York, we're always driving right on uh, I-90, uh, right past um, Progressive Field. And um, gosh, we've done that dozens of times at this point, or at least a couple dozen times, I'd say, over more than a decade. Um, and so even though we drive through it so often, we never really go there, so to speak, or occasionally, but not too often. Um, so the last time I was really there for a time was in 2017. Um, I've got this glass with me here that I'm about to finish a beer on. It's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame glass. It actually commemorated, uh, there was a special exhibit there in 2017 that um, was recognizing Rolling Stone's 50th anniversary. Um, and uh, overall, it's a pretty cool experience. Um, so basically, my wife and I made a weekend out of out of it where we saw uh, U2 at the uh, Browns football stadium on a Saturday night. Um, and we went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the next day and then um, went head, headed back right back home. So we made a really nice quick weekend out of it. So um, just really fun memories from that weekend and hard to believe it was already seven years ago. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm going to throw a link in the uh, description part of this video that actually has a full concert video of that U2 show. Um, if you're interested in uh, listening to some, um, you know, U2 uh, live music, uh, it was actually well recorded and it's got like hundreds of thousands of views. Um, so it's probably by some concert goer who like travels with the band and records all sorts of shows. Um, but the quality is quite good, so I'm actually going to throw a link to it. I've you know I've glanced at it from a couple of times over the years myself. Um, but um, anyway, in case you're interested, look that I'll have that link for you if um, if you want to you know give that a listen. It's about a two hour show, and the whole the whole show is in that link. Um, but uh, another thing about Cleveland makes me think real before I get to my plan is I've only been to one um, Indians slash Guardians game, um, and that was about. Gosh, a little over 20 years ago, um, and it was on a Sunday, and um, it was a little rainy and drizzly, and near the end of the season, and it was a great experience. It was still known as Jacobs Field at that point. Um, very, very fun ballpark. I look forward to going to another one. Um, probably won't be happening on this trip. I think they're on the road, actually, during the show, or about to hit the road, something like that. But, um, you know, again, I'm looking forward to uh, just connecting with a bunch of you um, for the two days while I'm there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm hoping uh, hoping I come away with at least one or two pickups that uh, I'm kind of earmarking for the show. So I'm going to segue now to my plan, if you will. So I've developed a spreadsheet of about 30 cards, and I really don't want it to get any longer than that. Um, and of those 30, if I come away with, you know, three or four um, I'll be totally happy, maybe even two or three, depending on which ones they are, because some of them are kind of big. Um, but what I'm going to do here is kind of um, mention four players who I'm targeting, if you will. Um, 
Some of them are just particular cards, actually. Um, in fact, they're all particular cards, but there are four players um, in particular that I kind of have, you know, more like in boldface, asterisks, etc. on my notes that I'll be bringing with me that um, I'll kind of be looking for. And, you know, if it happens, it happens. You know, the right card kind of comes up at the right time, at the right price, you know, for the condition that works for me. Great. If none of these work for me, you know, then, then it is what it is, and I'll definitely come away with something. So, without further ado, let me go to the first card that I'm really kind of targeting at this show that I'd love to come home with, and that is the 1954 Red Heart Stan Musial. Um, uh, I am, I've mentioned a couple times um, on, re on videos this year that um, I extended my goal, if you will, of collecting. So, after building the entire 1954 Topps Hall uh, top set, the whole 1954 Topps baseball set, um, which was, you know, uh, an undertaking unto itself um, for a couple of years, um, something that I still kind of hard to believe I did it. Um, but now I've since, um, I bought almost the, the whole set raw, uh, ungraded, and I've since um, graded all 22 Hall of Fame cards in that set as well. And so, in a sense, I closed the book on the 54 top set for me because I don't see myself grading any more cards, even though I have several of, you know, near Hall of Famers that, um, or just, you know, multi-all-stars that could be graded. Um, I won't be doing that, I don't think, anytime soon because I think once you go down that, one, that could become a, a wormhole, a rabbit hole pretty quickly. It's like, when do you stop grading? So I think I've closed the book on that. But I have since um, started a goal of collecting the 14 cards, 14 cards of the Hall of Famers. So there are 14 Hall of Famers um, who are not in the 54 top set because of exclusive contracts with players during the Bowman Tops rivalry. And so um, basically 13 of the 14 I'm looking to get from Bowman because I'm just focusing on the major issues, uh, with the card issues. 13 of them are from Bowman, and then one, Musial, uh, was in neither set, and his Red Heart set is, you know, an iconic card of the decade and to a large degree in the hobby as well, especially from that, you know, 50s, 60s golden era, 40s to 60s golden era of cards, and so um, I am going to actually be on the lookout for that one on the show. I've kind of made up my mind on that in just the last few days. I expect to see, you know, there should be at least a few there. Um, you know, it's not a super duper um, easy card to find, but, you know, in Strongsville in April, when I wasn't truly looking for it, um, I probably saw at least three or four. So, and, you know, given the size of the national, I expect to hopefully see a fair amount. And, um, you know, again, price will be an issue if they're anywhere, you know, in a five or up, then that'll be way past my budget, maybe even a four and up. So kind of, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a three or an acceptable two. Um, I really want to see the the red background um, just as nicey nice as possible um, because it's just such an iconic great card that red is just unbelievable so um, that's the main card I'm going to sort of keep an eye out for the next player I'm kind of keeping an eye out for is Jimmy Fox um, I think it would be just super cool to have a Jimmy Fox card and um, you know I don't at the moment um, at Strongsville um, not long before I left, um, the last card I picked up there was a, a really cool 1962 um, Topps AO Home Run Leaders in a PSA 7. Um, the other card I was weighing that against for around the same price that I paid for that one was the uh, 1935 Gaudi 4-in-1 with the Jimmy, Fox, the Jimmy Fox on it, so the A's card, Philadelphia A's card with Fox on it. And it was in a one, I think. I think it was an SGC one, if I remember right. And it was, so it was about the same price, roughly, as that PSA 7 62A home run leader. So it was, you know, in the 125 to 150 ballpark, roughly, um, I think, if I remember right. And I decided to go with the uh, Mantle Maris home run leader card. Um, and I don't regret doing that. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of that Gaudi image of Fox. Um, you know, some illustrations from those Gaudi and Diamond Star sets are awesome and amazing and some of them are not quite up to par for what I'm kind of into and 
Unfortunately, I think that Fox is kind of up there. I mean, it's okay, but if I'm going to, you know, shell out for a Jimmy Fox card, um, I'd love for it to be an actual photograph if possible. Um, and so the two cards I'm keeping an eye out on are first the 1940 play ball. So these are the Red Sox in this picture here. Um, I don't necessarily like his 41 play ball because it has like a variation of Boston on his jersey. Now, I don't know if they were, it just has a B on there. And I don't know if that was like an alternate jersey that they did wear for a time, but it doesn't, you know, it's not the classic Red Sox jersey. So um, the 40 play ball is, it's the same pose too. Same shot basically that uh, for 41, they went with that B in the illustration for some reason. But um, the 40 play ball is one that I'm targeting. And then the other one is the 1934 Batter Up. Um, and he actually has two cards and that's uh, in those, um, you know, I guess you call it a set. And you don't have any, uh, you know, they're blank backs. Um, but I think the Batter Ups are kind of cool. I don't have one. I think it would be kind of neat to get one at some point. Um, he has two cards in that set, 1934 Batter Up. And I'm looking at the number 28, um, which is him with the uh, Philadelphia A's with an awesome swing. So... Um, those are the two foxes that I would consider, um, you know, in terms of adding one, possibly. Now, I don't see myself getting both a Musial Red Heart and a Jimmy Fox. I don't necessarily see that happening. If it did, probably blow my entire budget for the show. Um, but um, we'll see. Uh, so that's another player I'm looking out for. And then two others. Um, this one, I really hope I find, and I, I, I imagine I'll see several maybe even many, but I'm really hoping I can maybe come away with this for the show. And that's the 1930, uh, it's either 34 or 35, I think it was 34, Diamond Stars, Bill Dickey. Um, I did a similar video like this ahead of Strongsville, and I, I believe I showed this card on that video as well. And uh, so I haven't gotten it yet in the last three months or so, and I haven't been looking intently for it um, from time to time, uh, but... I would love to come away with that card uh, after the you know, after I head home from Cleveland. I just think the art deco ness of that card is just so cool, and um, like I love just the backgrounds, like a column kind of thing going on with just the multicolored dimensions that they do. It's just just a cool card, and the portrait itself is really really nice. I like the New York on his jersey. Um, he actually has two cards in that set that are both the same image, I believe, but they have different or different numbers. Number eleven, I think, is the that, that's the the one that's not as pricey and so card number 11 would be totally fine uh, i can't remember the other number but it's up there above 100 and it might even be like one like it's over 100 i know that um, and that one's considerably more um, for whatever reason just because they probably didn't print as many um it probably has the next season's like batting average line at the bottom of the card on the back is probably what the difference is between the two um, other than the card number. But uh, so the Dickey would love to come away with that one this year. So the last player I'm thinking of, and this one's kind of coming out of left field a little bit, but not really, because he's a Hall of Famer too. Um, and that is Johnny Mize. Um, I don't know exactly what got me to looking at his stats recently, but he is one overlooked Hall of Famer. Um, you know, he won five... I think he won five World Series with the Yankees at the end of his career because he was more of a role player by the time he got to the Yankees. And his 52 tops card is sweet with the Yankee Stadium facade in the background, and it's a horizontal. Cool card. Um, I'll probably pick that up someday. Probably not this at the National, but because uh, I want to keep the funds, you know, as tight as I can and not spread it out too thin. I'm going to really try to um, have some discipline <laughs> this week coming up. Um, so I'll pick that 52 tops up someday. Um, it's a great card. But I'm actually focusing on his 1948 Bowman, which uh, he's with the New York Giants at that time of his career. I don't own a 48 Bowman card actually yet, and I think that would be a cool one to get. Um, so I'm going to maybe keep an eye out for that, or I will be keeping an eye out for that. But even more than that Bowman, I'm going to be looking further back at the beginning of his career kind of technically is his rookie card um, from my from what I understand and it's from a set that I think is it's a little more on the rare side and so 
I expect to see a few. I hope to see a few. They might be out of my budget, but we'll see if I can find one. It is the 1936 R312. It is a National Chickle Pastel. That's kind of what they're known as. Um, National Chickle also made the Diamond Stars cards a couple years before this set, which is a little larger, blank backs, but they're really interesting cards. They're kind of like, you know, they call them pastels because they kind of have little um, touches on the illustrations where the players tend to have rosy cheeks, if you will, just a little bit of that uh, kind of embellishment on the on the portrait piece a little bit. Um, but they're interesting. They're kind of well done, I think. And so um, I'm going to keep an eye out for that Mize, but I'm also going to just to keep a lookout for other ones from that set. Um, I believe they're 50, uh, 50 cards overall, and a lot of them are multiplayer cards with other Hall of Famers. Um, like, like I know there's a Triss Speaker card, but I think he's a manager at that point. And there's one other Hall of Famer in that picture. He's like, there are three players. I think it's Speaker and another Hall of Famer and another player from the same team. But um, just, to, you know, that's just one example. There are several multiplayer cards and just um, a lot of interesting ones. So I'm going to kind of keep a lookout to see if I maybe come away with an example from that set, whether it's mine or somebody else. So I've got about two dozen other cards on a spreadsheet that I'll be bringing with me. And actually one of them only is not after 1954. Um, I have a 1971 Top Super of Pete Rose on there because I think it's a really cool card, and you can find that in a lot of shows. But if I see that one and the price is all right, I might actually pick it up that pick it up next week. But um, so those are kind of the cards that I'm highlighting in particular. Most of them are pre-war, so we'll see what I can come away with. Um, more than anything, though, I'm looking forward to you know just meeting a bunch of you again either uh, again or maybe for the first time since I was out there last year. Again, this will be my second national. Can't wait for it. And um, what I'm going to do here, i got two more things I'm going to show in this video, or one more thing I'm going to do in this video, but, uh, and, and that is I'm going to show the cards that I'm about to um, send to SGC or bring to SGC at the show. I'm going to give them 10 cards uh, for a grading submission, and so I'll wrap the video up with me showing, off, uh, showing those cards um, to um, that what I'm bringing um, and the last thing is I actually put together a little poll question on the uh, community tab I guess you'll see it on my um, uh, I'll link to it in my description as well but on the community tab I guess on my YouTube uh, profile page I have a little poll question pertaining to again the rock and roll, not the rock and roll hall of fame in particular but knowing where the show is um, it just, you know, it's all about nostalgia, right? Kind of what we're doing in, vintage, in the vintage side of the hobby. Um, and so it got me thinking, 40 years ago, 1984, I um, bought the first album, actually it turned out to be two albums, bought my first two albums with my own money uh, when I was 11. And so just put a question out there um, in the, that, you know, I'll link to it. What were the two albums that I bought? Just a little multiple choice question, four answers. I actually thought about doing a VR for that, something like that. It might be, it might have been fun to kind of, you know, people wanted to share uh, what maybe the first album they bought was that they can remember. Um, and by all means, feel free to mention that in the comments below. I'd love to know. Um, I decided not to not to do the VR on that, but um, I did work up a poll question. So, um, and I'll I'll share the answer for it during my national recap video. Um, so that'll probably be Sunday after the show or maybe the Monday after the show, but. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn the phone around, show the 10 cards that um, I'll be bringing to SGC, so hang on a sec. All right, here are the 10 cards I'm going to uh, bring over to the SGC booth at the National. Um, 10 cards again, and starting with my 1953 Topps Roy Campanella. Um, I shared most of these in prior videos, but not all. Probably about three or four I have not shown before. Um, but this one I picked up a couple of months ago. Um, I'm hoping this will come back as a three. The background's really nice, that red. Um, it's far from a perfect card, but for, for uh, what I think is a, a VG, uh, hopefully at minimum, um, it's got really nice eye appeal. Um, really like this card, so I'm looking forward to, uh, looking forward to getting this in a slab. 
Okay, so that's one. The next card is going to be this one. So this is a new one that, um, and it's actually a, a fairly recent pickup. Um, it's 1957 Topps Willie Mays. Um, I did pick this up shortly after he passed away last month. So this was uh, a, a more recent pickup that I had not shown yet. Um, I was going to wait till, till this this moment here to share it. Um, it was a little bit of an impulse buy, I admit that, but um, and partly because not only does it have that pretty gnarly crease there with paper loss, it also has writing on the back. Um, but basically, after he passed away, um, I just I just really wanted to get this card. This was the one card that um, you know he's got so many cards, and I've got a few of them now, but. Uh, this was the one card that I just really wanted to get the most that I didn't have that I knew I could get in terms of budget um, is this 57 uh, because it's got the you know the full background of a photo um, which is really one of his only and perhaps only like major issue card like that um, in terms of like you see the polo grounds in the background with the NY um, in terms of a standard baseball card photo which they really you know tops got going in 57 really um, after mostly illustrations for you know their first several years um i just really love this card wanted to get it for a while and just finally decided i'm getting it now and so i just i gave myself a budget to work with and held to it and got the best card in my opinion i could um and, and so in that regard the centering's really good on this card centering's great actually and so from an eye appeal standpoint i can live with that i know it's going to be a one um, but I think it'll be a nice looking one actually. So I'm looking forward to seeing that in a slab. Okay, the next one I actually just showed recently and I got a couple of comments about it. You know, people saying how nice of a card it was and I was talking about how I'm, I'm totally fine with it not getting graded, but you know what? You could, you convinced me. The, the few of you who talked to me, talk me about it, you've convinced me to slab this card. I'm going to get uh, my 1958 Topps Eddie Matthews graded. Um, again, I mentioned it's got a very slight wrinkle right in here. Uh, you might actually be picking it up right there. Right here is where it is. It's pretty subtle, but if you get it in the right light, it's there. Um, but the centering's nice. The eye appeal's so nice. And I actually took out a, I took out my my 61 mantle, because I, I think, or I'm hoping, that this is the grade the Matthews is going to get, a three. And here's another reason why I'm just going to slab it. It's going to look so sweet in a tux. So um, one reason why I'm going to also do this is because one day or someday I will, I will also have the um, the 58 Hank Aaron and the 58 Warren Spawn, the Braves cards with the green backgrounds. The, you know I'm going to want them slabbed. And so I might as well get Eddie slabbed as well and have all three of them in tuxes at some point. So um, absolutely uh, do like this card a lot, and it'll look awesome in a tux. All right, let me move along a little quicker here. This card I also showed quite a while ago, actually, in a video where I asked if I should grade it or not. Probably about two years ago or a year ago or more. Um, I was wondering about this 59 Mini Minoso, and now I'm convinced um, I'm going to finally just get it graded extreme off-center left and all three of the four corners are just really nice the image i really like the image of mini himself and this bottom corner's just got the slightest tick on it really slight though back is strong hoping for a five on this one um, because of the off-centeredness i'm hoping he can still at least pull out a five okay moving to the 60s i shared this one recently 1961 tops Roberto Clemente hoping this will come back a two it's a pretty rough one but I got it as part of a nice uh pretty inexpensive lot of Clemente cards and um, um I'm sticking with two of the cards uh, from the lot um I've sold I will have sold the others and uh this is the other one so I'm gonna put Clemente aside hoping for a two out of him centering's pretty good on that um it's this uh, the other one that I'm holding on to from that sale or of, of a lot that I purchased with really when you um I got it for like 40 and change out the door and um I'm selling cards for about 20 to 25 um out of that lot and so that's basically I'm looking at like 20 bucks for these two cards is what this cost me so I think it's makes sense to get them graded um 
uh, this Willie Mays here, Roberto Clemente, it also has Dick Rode on it, who actually won the batting title in 60. Um, it's got a rough cut up here, but I am hoping it could still pull out. It might still pull out a five. I'm hoping it can. It might. That might be a bit of a stretch. Might be more of a four, four and a half, but um, hoping for a five on it. And I'm only grading it because I got it for a pretty good price overall. Um, but the, it's you know it's got two Hall of Famers on it. So um, next one, 1961 tops Al Kaline. I've had this card for a decent while. Um, you know, three three to four years I'd say. I got this pretty early when I got back in the hobby, and I I looked up the eBay purchase price uh, recently. I paid eight dollars and eighty eight cents for this. That was the winning bid. So. Um, uh, I'm going to get it graded finally. It looks awesome on the front. Back it looks good too, but the corner wear is a little evident on the back. It's pretty slight though. It's not that major. Um, hoping for at least a five. Um, because the centering's good, I'm, I'm, it's a touch to the left. A touch to the left and a touch down. But it's pretty good overall. Um, hoping for a five, maybe a 5.5. Six might be tough, but we'll see. All right, got uh, three more. Here's one I've never shown before. 1963 Tops Bob Gibson. Um, I've had this probably for three or four years, I'd say. Got it from one of my LCSs. I think I I think I paid, I want to say 15 bucks for this, maybe. Um, so if I'm in for 30 on this, I'm fine with that, just based on, basing on what I'm seeing threes and fours go for, um, for SGC. And I think this has a chance for a four because the centering is really good and the image quality is really good. Um, there's no, like, fish eyes in here. And just the image himself, the main photo is pretty crisp and nice. The registration is pretty good. It's got, you know, the corner wear that you'd expect from a, a VGEX, I'd say. And because the centering is good on both sides, I'm hopeful for a four. I'll be really happy with a four. So we'll see. Two more. Uh, one I've shown before. This one here. 1968 Willie Mays. I got this in early May to kind of recognize his birthday. Uh, he passed away just of like about five weeks after he turned 93. This AA kid. Um, this photo is also used in a 65 Tops, I believe, as well. I'm hoping for a three on this one. It's not great in the back, um, but it's got a little bit of kind of a slight corner crease there. It's a little hard to pick up at the moment. Yeah, you can sort of tell. It's also got a little bit of lift on the edges there corners are soft overall I'd say so I'm hopeful it could still pull out a three I think it's got decent eye appeal last card another LCS pickup recently have not shown this card until now a 1969 Roberto Clemente so I got a couple of Clementes a couple of mazes in this so um in this order but uh i'm hopeful this can pull out at least a five um it's off center in a couple of directions but not extremely so back's pretty nice i think i got this for 27 i think he had it for 30 he gave me 10 percent off so um looking forward to getting this one slabbed as well hopeful for a five and one note i'll mention at the end here is that uh, i was hoping to get my jim palmer rookie which i showed recently uh put in this order as well but now on their further review i am a little concerned that the card may be trimmed and so that is unfortunate so what i'm going to probably do with that is send it to a psa uh, group submitter here probably in the fall along with probably about 10 other cards and uh, if it does come back authentic, I'll sell it and just cut my losses. Um, but there you have it. Um, there's my SGC order. And um, that is all for this video. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one and hope to see you in Cleveland. Take care.